In this problem, we want to figure out the distinct types of hydrogens in the molecule and the distinct types of carbon in the molecule. And what you should immediately kind of recognize with this is three of the same group. We have this central carbon, and there's an ethyl group, an ethyl group, and an ethyl group coming off of it. There's no way to differentiate those three ethyl groups. For example, if I were to put a mark on this carbon right here, and then I were to take this molecule, spin it around, turn it over, twist it around, you wouldn't know if this was the one I marked, this was the one I marked, or this was the one I marked. And that's because all three are chemically equivalent. So let's start with the carbons because we have a nice picture of the carbon framework in this molecule. We first have our central carbon atom right here. That is the first type of carbon. I'm going to label that as A. Then connected to that carbon, we have CH2 groups. All three of those are equivalent. You can't distinguish any of those three. So that we would say is carbon type B. And then finally, connected to the CH2, we have a CH3, and that is carbon type C. So in this molecule, there are three distinct types of carbons. For the hydrogen, it might be helpful if you draw the hydrogen in. So here's my central carbon that's bonded to a CH2 and a CH3. Same thing here, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3, and don't forget this central carbon also has a hydrogen on it. All right, this is very similar to the carbons that we identified. So now we have the hydrogen on the central carbon. That's one type, so I'll make that A. Then we have the two hydrogen on the CH2 groups. And at one CH2, those two hydrogen are equivalent, but also the two hydrogen on this CH2 and the two hydrogen on this CH2. All of those are indistinguishable. So that's type B. And the same thing with the CH3. All of these CH3s are indistinguishable. That's type C. So this molecule has three types of hydrogen as well. To figure out the number of distinct hydrogen in this molecule, I'm going to draw the structure and include hydrogens in my formula. So a partially condensed type structure. CH2, we have an O, C double bond O, CH2, 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 and finally a CH3. So now as we go through, we want to identify the distinct types of hydrogen. And I'm going to start with the left end, and we have these three hydrogen. Those are indistinguishable from one another. So that's going to be hydrogen type A. Then we get to the CH2. Well, this is different than the CH3, so that's going to be type B. But the two hydrogen on that carbon are equivalent. Now we have an oxygen, a carbon, and then we have a CH2. Now sometimes people will mistakenly think, well, that should be B like this because they're both CH2s but they're in different environments. And in fact, I can distinguish those verbally just by saying the CH2 bonded to the carbonyl versus the CH2 bonded to the oxygen. Those are in different environments. Those are different types of CH2 groups. So that'll be type C. Next, we go on to another CH2. That's going to be type D. And you can distinguish that from this one by saying this CH2 is just one carbon away from the carbonyl. 
This CH2 is two carbons away. They're in different environments. We come down to the next CH2, that is E. And then finally, the CH3 is type F. It's different than this CH3 because there's not symmetry. This CH3 is two atoms away from an oxygen. This CH3, if you want to count from that oxygen, one, two, three, four, five away. So they are distinct. That means this compound has six different types of hydrogens. Now let's look at the carbons. And we'll just work from our original structure up here. Now you don't care about the hydrogen, but look at the carbon. So we have the CH3 carbon here. I'll make that A. We have a CH2 carbon. That's B. They're both carbons, but they're in different environments. One's closer to the oxygen than the other. Right? Now don't forget about this carbon. It doesn't have any hydrogen, so we didn't even look at it down here. But in terms of carbon, it is a distinct type of carbon. So that would be C. This CH2D. This CH2 carbon E. This CH2 carbon will be F, and then the CH3 will be G. So this has seven distinct types of carbon. In this example, we have a double bond. And when you see a double bond, you really want to think about that as kind of a lock in the molecule. Meaning, let's just say we have this simple compound here. Even though these two hydrogen are on the same carbon, those are chemically distinct. Why? They're in different environments. One is locked opposite the chlorine or trans to the chlorine. The other is locked by that double bond cis to the chlorine or on the same side. So those are distinct hydrogens. So just in this simple molecule, we would have A, B, C, three types of hydrogens. All right, so let's come up to our example here. And if we want to do the number of distinct hydrogens, again, it might be helpful to draw in our hydrogens. And in this case, I'm actually just going to write them in on this structure. Here at the end, we have this CH3. This is a CH2, CH2, and then we have a couple of CH3s at these bond terminus. Now, as we go through to figure out our distinct hydrogen, the CH3 group on the left, that's one type. Then we have the alkene CH. That's the second type. Now we have the other alkene, CH. That's a different type. And again, it's in a different environment. This one is on the carbon with the CH3. This one is on a carbon with a CH2 attached. There are two totally different types. Next, we have the CH2 in the chain. That'll be D. We have the next CH2 in the chain. That'll be E. One's closer to the double bond, one's further away. That makes them distinct. Then we have a carbon with no hydrogen, so nothing to worry about there. Then we have the methyl group, which will make F. But this methyl group is on this carbon. This methyl group is on the same carbon. There's free rotation around the single bond here. So depending on where these are at any given time in space, you can't distinguish them. So both of those methyls are equivalent. So these three hydrogen are equivalent to these three hydrogen. They're both F. And then the hydrogen on the OH is G. Even though it's not on a carbon, it's still a distinct type of hydrogen. This molecule then has seven distinct types of hydrogen. Now let's count the carbons. 
Just to give us a clean structure to work with, I've redrawn it. All right, don't forget every time you have a termination point, that is a carbon you have to account. So here we'll say that CH3 is carbon A. Then we have the two carbons of the double bond. One is B, one is C. They are distinct. B has a methyl group attached. C has a CH2 group attached. Different environments. Next we have the CH2D, the CH2 carbon E. Then we have this carbon here that we ignored before because it didn't have any hydrogen. But if you're figuring out the distinct types of carbon, that is a distinct carbon type. So that will be F. And then the two methyl groups are still equivalent. Those will each be G. So this molecule has seven distinct types of carbon. In this example, we have a cyclic ketone. One of the first things that you want to spot here is a plane of symmetry. So that means whatever group is on the left is going to be equivalent to the group on the right or on the other side of the symmetry plane. Let's start with the number of distinct carbons. Our first distinct carbon type is the carbonyl carbon. Let's make that A. Then we have this CH2, which is type B, but it's mirrored on the left side. So it's type B over here as well. Now we have another CH2 in the ring. This one is different than B because it's further away from the carbonyl. But it's mirrored here. That's type C on both sides. And then at the bottom of our ring, we have a carbon that's type D. So we have four distinct types of carbon. Now when we want to determine the number of distinct hydrogen types, you still want to keep in mind the symmetry that runs through this molecule. It runs through this carbonyl, through the carbon, and through this carbon on the bottom. Let's go ahead and draw in the hydrogen so we can keep track of them. Two here, two here, two here, two here, and two here. All right now, just like we did with the carbons, we have these two hydrogen that are equivalent to these two. So that's type A on both sides. Then we have these two hydrogen at this CH2 that's equivalent to these two on the right. That's type B. And then finally, down at the bottom of the ring, you have this CH2 group. That's the third type of hydrogen. That's type C. So this one has three distinct types of hydrogen. In this molecule, we have a ring. There's a couple of wedged groups on it, and you really need to be careful if you have chiral centers and an acyclic molecule or groups on one side of a ring. Because if I draw this in kind of a slightly different viewpoint, and we think about the chlorines are out, which we can equate those to being upward, and then we have hydrogen that are kind of downward on the bottom side of the ring. What you see, hopefully, is that you have this top side of the ring and the bottom side. And those are two different environments. On the top side of the ring, things will interact with these chlorines that are pointing up. On the bottom side of the ring, you don't have those chlorines making for a different environment. So what that means is hydrogen on one side of the ring will be distinct from hydrogen on the other side of the ring. Now this compound does have a plane of symmetry we have to be aware of. The symmetry plane runs right through the middle. Let's draw in the hydrogens. 
We have a back hydrogen here, a back hydrogen here. Then on the next carbons, we have an out and a back, out, back, out, and back. So like we've been doing, let's start with the hydrogen on these carbons. These hydrogen, we have one on the left, it's back. The one on the right is on the other side of the mirror plane, it's equivalent, so that's also type A. Now we come further around the ring, we get to these carbons, which are mirrored. The hydrogen that are out represent one type, so this would be B. The other out hydrogen on that carbon is also B. Those are up close to the chlorine. They see the chlorine's environment. The back hydrogen are distinct type C. Those are down on the bottom of the ring away from chlorine's environment. And next we get to the CH2 group. At the very bottom we have the out hydrogen which is D. It's out in the same direction as the chlorine. The back hydrogen is E. It's back away from the chlorine. So this molecule has five distinct types of hydrogen. When we go to do the carbon, it actually becomes a little simpler because you don't have carbons above and below the ring. We just have the carbons that are part of the ring. So if I redraw this, we still have our plane of symmetry. But now it's a little simpler because we just need to go through and figure out the carbons. Here's one type. It's mirrored on the other side of the plane. Here's the next type, which is mirrored. And then the third type is down here at the bottom. So we have three distinct types of carbon.